in the slide deck. And I apologize for those in advance, but there's a lot of places I think I just want to kind of speak to you about what's going on and what I see. And so I'll ignore things that I've forgotten and try and, and, and say them um, as, I, as I go through my slides. So you may remember last year, if you were here last year, that I put up a bunch of challenges that, that we have, that the university has. And so I just thought I would go and repeat this slide and see, well, where the heck are we? Um, well, there was that whole Pac-12 debacle, you may remember, and uh, we still don't know what's going on with that. I'm told that the president's number one job right now is to, is to figure out how we're going to be in a, in a conference of some kind. And for those of you who may not be familiar, you know, I, I don't give this talk about football, and I don't necessarily, you know, have any judgment about football at the university one way or the other, but it is a fact that football is important and athletics is important here, and it affects all of us and what we do, it affects our budgets. And so, you know, we, we pay have to pay attention to that a little bit. So the WSU prestige thing, there's been some improvement there. There's more needed, but we drip, we got, we dropped down there pretty, uh, pretty far, but now we're sort of climbing back up. So that's good. Um, the budget debacle, of course, uh, unfortunately has gotten worse. Um, I said last year, there was no new model coming. And so the response of the administration was to go back to the old one, which is even worse, um, especially for CAS and for us. So that's unfortunately going to be a challenge. Continued budget cuts are going to be a challenge for us too. So for fiscal 25, we've got a 1.6 core budget cut. Um, for, for the College of Arts and Sciences, it's only 1.2%. It's only and I guess what I want to point out about that is that it was this year, instead of across the board, it was at least strategic. There were other unit, there were units that had to cut up to 5%. I will, I will acknowledge on this little bullet point about administrative bloat that I had last year, that on average, there were larger cuts to the administrative units than to the academic units. So, you know, some consolation there. Um, we went from administrative bloat, unfortunately, to administrative suspense. So right now um, we have kind of a lame duck president, you know, who's leaving in next June and, and the search has just started. Um, we're still looking for a, a new VP for research. For those of you who don't know, um, uh, Chris Keen here is our former VP for research and has rejoined physics and astronomy. So I just want to say welcome, Chris. Thank you. I'm glad to have you. So that's ongoing. Uh, we have a new provost, so that happened July 1st, um, but of course new, so you know, still trying to figure out what's going on and we're trying to get to know him, um, Chris Riley Tillman, and um, oh yes, and, and we have an interim dean now because our dean left in, in the spring for San Diego State, and unfortunately the interim period goes all the way until next year, so we're not supposed to search for a new dean until a year from now. So that's a little bit frustrating. Um, I like, don't get me wrong, I like the interim dean and I work well with her, but the problem with all of this suspense is that, you know, you go with an idea to somebody and they all say, oh, well, you know, we've got to wait until, you know, we, we get a new president or a new provost or a new this or a new that, fill in the blank, right? Um, and so that's kind of been part of the challenge for me. Yes, but that chancellor's also interim. Oh, is it? Well, see, I have even. I have believe that one just goes away. Chancellors, yeah. <laughs> chancellors is a layer that I haven't even started really paying attention to. Yet, I have to say. Yeah. Okay, so right. But anyway, the, the point is, there's a lot of uncertainty, and there's a lot of this feeling of, well, we can't do anything until. And I'm sorry, but we don't have that kind of time. All right. And so my job, part of my job here is to push, is to push and try and get things moving and things started that we need to get started, um, even in the face of, of this. So coming back to the budget cuts, you know, last year I put up a slide that said these budget cuts were 6%. And it turned out that that wasn't, it wasn't really 6%, okay? And it turns out that, that we were able as a college to escape the large fraction of what was supposed to be an across the board cut. 
I'm told that mostly we did that by just spending it. All right. Um, so that strategy goes for a while and then it doesn't work so well. And so now the college is coming back and saying, well, this 1.2 for us, for the College of Arts and Sciences, which physics and astronomy is a unit in, is hard, as in a hard number. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to present some challenges for us. It really is. And I'll get to some of those as we go along. But, you know, um, uh, I just want to be honest and clear with everybody. And we're not the only ones going through this sort of thing, um, although it feels you know, for me, after being here for, for seven and a half years, it feels to me like, like this is going to be bumpy for the next couple of years until we figure this out, okay? Just being honest, um, you know, and, and here's a big chunk of it, right? And this is true for, this is true for a lot of institutions. I think it's more true for us than it is for some others than, you know, say the University of Idaho across the, across the way. But we are, we are suffering from de declining enrollment, okay? Now, there's a lot of debate about enrollment around here. If you look in the papers and so forth, I'm not here to sort of tell you all, this is the actual story. The number of students that we have on campus is, has dropped. And it's dropped, as you can see, the red is Pullman, 17, you know, in, in 2020, these numbers you can't see very well, but 16.7, 15.5, 14.8, they go down another nine or 10%. This is the fall semester. They go down another nine to 10% in spring because of presumably retention issues, okay? This is a problem, but last year we had an increase in the first year class and that's good. And, and you can argue, and it's true that you can't do much about the people that are already here not being enough of them. All you can really do is get new people. Okay, and we're doing that, and that's good. Some would say that maybe part of what we're doing there is digging deeper into a pool that has a harder time being retained. I'm not trying to persuade you one way or another. My, final, my, my point here is that this line is a bad. It's a bad because we don't teach as many students, we don't bring as, many, as much tuition, we don't, we don't have reason to, to hire as many TAs in departments like ours that that's really important for. And so it's something we really have to pay attention to. And unfortunately, the trend has been for a long time now, the revenue that we get, the money that we get to survive, to pay teaching assistantships, to pay salaries for our faculty and for our postdocs and for everybody, that money comes from tuition. It comes from tuition a lot more than it used to, okay? So these numbers matter, all right? So, so far, oh yeah, and don't forget, this is even before we get to this ridiculous thing. You may, those of you may remember, well, I, a lot of you actually don't, but in 2007 and 2008, there was a great recession that came about because people who couldn't afford $3 million houses were you know, buying them anyway with huge mortgages and defaulting. And anyway, I won't get into that. The point is, it was it was it was bad. It was bad enough that it led to a decrease in the birth rate. And if you do your math from 2007-2008, those kids are about ready to go to college next year. And there aren't there aren't enough. There aren't nearly as many as there have been. So across the board, we're anticipating a decrease in enrollment because of that dip in demographics, all right? So, you know, um, buckle up, all right? Uh, it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna do the best I can uh, with, with uh, keeping the department going and keeping us, you know, moving, doing the things that, that, that we normally do. Now, let me just say, I, so I've, I've probably now just, you know, given you all this doom and gloom, and, you know, I'm gonna say, so one of my favorite all-time quotes, I'm a baseball guy, one of my favorite all-time quotes is from Joe DiMaggio. Joe DiMaggio was asked one time, he was asked, you know, sometime late in December, or late in September, rather, when the Yankees had already won the pennant by 25 games, 
you know, why do you keep going out there and diving after balls and, and, and you know, going after it every single moment of every single game? He says, because there might be someone out there that's never seen me play. All right? That's how I look at this department. I look at the people that are in here and I say, these guys play, but they want to make sure that everybody who sees them knows that they're giving it their best. They're giving it their best in teaching and best in research. They're giving it their best in community outreach and service. Okay? And I think we do have a vibrant, well-functioning department with a friendly, collaborative culture. I think we've built that. You've helped me build that. And I'm grateful. It's not perfect, but I think we are continually improving. I'll talk a little bit about that as you go along, okay? The performance here is exceptional. I don't care what anybody says. I'll put the best, I'll put the best people in this department up against anybody anywhere. We're not as big, we're not as deep, but you look at the numbers, you look at the papers, you look at the journals the papers are in, right? There's excellence here. We have continued generous support from our donors. Thank heavens for that. Many, many of the things that I can still do, despite the fact that we no longer have a budget for them or no longer a nominal budget for them, I do because we have donors, not only that donate money to us directly, but that donate money to us that is unrestricted. In other words, they trust me to put that money where it's most needed, which is really important to have that kind of flexibility. I just want to uh, give a shout out to our staff. We have an excellent staff. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. We're, we, I said last year that we were rebuilding. I think we're almost rebuilt. Okay, and so I'll talk a little bit about that. And of course, we continue, continue over the last years, even though there are a lot of units in this university that have struggled, that have lost faculty. We have continued not just to hire people, to keep us from shrinking, but to hire excellent people, okay? And that is reason for hope. And that is a huge difference. And that I attribute to you all. When I give this talk, there's some stuff I put up that goes up every year. So people who have seen it 10 times, they've seen it 10 times. Mm -hmm. But again, like DiMaggio says, there's always somebody new out there who hasn't seen you before. And so I want to reiterate what we're about, what our mission is. Forefront of research strategically focused for our institution. You know that, right? We're focused on specific things because we're not as big. We can't be everything to everybody. Graduate training that combines formal and class instruction with world class research experience, innovative undergraduate education. That provides also a research experience for undergraduates, educational, professional, and community service. This comes right from our strategic plan in 2009. It hasn't gotten old, all right? We make physicists and astronomers. That's what we do, okay? Now, in the old days, you might have said, well, we make at the university, we're a university of teachers and students, and we make physicists and astronomers, and then they go on to be professors and and they teach other physics, physicists and astronomers to be professors. And that's all well and good. That happens sometimes. But we all know now that most of the time that doesn't happen, that the students that we're training are doing a whole bunch of things, medical school, law school, they're getting involved in businesses, they're, you know, they're going into engineering, they're doing all sorts of things. But you know what? They're doing it successfully because of the way that we teach physics. And because of the nature of our discipline and the fact that we are passionate about our discipline, we believe in physics as a way to know. So our students carry their training into a wide variety of careers. And you will see that as you ask our students, undergraduate and graduate, where they go. Industry, intest, national laboratories. Okay? They go to good places, get good paying jobs, and are doing, you know, making important contributions to society. <clears throat> now, we are also building here a collaborative, inclusive department. And this is really important. This is a statement that is part of a statement that appears on our website. 
that talks about fostering an inclusive environment, supporting all students, faculty, staff, and visitors, regardless of race, national origin, national origin, gender identity, sexual orientation, age, disability, anything else. Okay. We have also acknowledged the system and the systemic barriers to success that exist within our society and will actively strive to address the causes of inequality within our community. We have a faculty committee for diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's chaired by Vivian Balsari, and Igu and Anya Guy are also members. And I just want to say this committee has done impactful things, real things, not performative things, like revise the way we assess our. Our, our graduate comprehensive exam. And upcoming this year in January, we're gonna host, okay, Vivian, what do they call it now? The Conference for Undergraduate Women and Gender Minorities. Oh, okay, so the Women and Gender Minorities is how they interpret the asterisk? Because yes. now, yeah, instead of Q whip, now we have a Q asterisk. Yeah. And, and it's just meant to, to, to be inclusive. It's meant to include these other, all of these groups. and. We are part of a consortium of universities in the Northwest that rotate hosting the, this conference, which brings about 100, 120 people to our, to our campus. Physics majors, good physics majors, people who are curious about what they could do next. It's a great showcase for our department. It's a great experience for those students. We did it last in 2020. People probably have a hard time remembering that because there was something else going on just afterwards that, that kind of took our attention away. But we did it then, it was successful. It was the last group thing that we did before we couldn't do group things anymore. And so we're gonna do it again, okay? And this is important, I'm committed to this. Um, this is a part of building a good department culture that we can all contribute to. And there's something I want to mention here, just um, again, a, a little bit off the cuff, but, but some one aspect of this, another aspect of this where you can make it concrete. And I'll appeal to everybody, and that's just about everybody in this room, who teaches students in, in our classes and our universities. And you know now that we have broadened our thinking we realize that there are people who identify beyond the binary genders, male and female, okay? I'm asking you as a community to be, not only to be respectful of that, but to, to ask people how they would like to be addressed, how they'd like to be called. And you know, in a classroom, it's not that hard. Most of our classes are small. It might be a little more challenging in the big lectures, I get it. But most of our classes are small, it doesn't hurt to pass something out and just simply say, hey, how would you like to be addressed? How would you like to be called? That's something that contributes to people feeling comfortable, included, a part of our department, okay? And so that's a part of this too. And so that's, that's, my, that's my ask in this area for this year. Here we are by the numbers, which I do every year. I mean, the numbers go, we have 20 tenure track faculty in the department. How about 13 full professors, three associate, four assistant? That's still a little skewed. We want more youth. Okay. Um, but the numbers are the numbers aren't bad. And there are a lot of a lot of department chairs who would get up here and have to show people numbers that have declined drastically in the last five years. Yeah, that's great which don't get me wrong, it's tragic. It's tragic, all right? But we have been fortunate. We have been very fortunate. I know that we also have seven career track faculty in our department. This includes two faculty at uh, uh, WSU Vancouver and one at, at WSU Tri-Cities who teach astronomy and physics in those camp on those campuses. We have numerous affiliate and adjunct faculty, shock physics, Applied sciences uh, over in engineering, math and stats. We have, I think, we have three postdocs. I think, um, or at least we have one postdoc and two coming. Gafon, Maria, is that right? They're coming. Uh, they're, they're here. Yes. One is here. One's here. One's here, but 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 the other is coming. 
Okay, good. Good. So five full-time administrative technical staff. I'll get to that in a moment too. Specifically, 53 graduate students. It's a little low. All right. And part of that is the fact that we only admitted four students last year. Not because that's what we were allowed or what we wanted to. It's just a it was just kind of a blip, statistical blip, I think. And, and we we made the same number of admissions and just didn't get as many people to come. This year we got 11. So that's good. The undergraduate majors are holding steady. I didn't update these numbers from last year, so they may be a little off, but I'll show you a graph that is that is correct in a moment. But I think we have about 90 students that are majors or are being advised in, in, in physics and astronomy. And there's some good news there too. Okay, so here's here's my slide with our postdocs. Of course, we have Chris Carroll, who's been a postdoc here for a couple of years now. How long, Chris? Three, three years. And he's on this prestigious LSST fellowship. So that's continuing this year. Um, and then I said, coming soon, I didn't, I couldn't find a picture of, of Hung Wee, um, but uh, I know he's coming to Yafong's group soon and, and Nicola Veronese is coming to, to, to Maria's group very soon. So, so one is already here, one is coming. So we'll have a, a, a group of three postdocs in the department, which is great. This is uh, so another place we've changed a lot in recent years. And so um, I sort of want to introduce them again. I, I introduced Jan at this talk last year, and, and she had been in the office for what, maybe half an hour, you know, something <laughs> like that. So Jan, uh, Jan is back there. Wave your hand, uh, Jan Down Morbeck. And she is our academic coordinator. So in charge of all the things that students have to go to and and and, and figure out and, and get in on time. And then brand new this year also is our business manager, uh, Julia Zaring. I'd like to welcome Julia. <laughs> Julia has been awesome. And um, she came on May the 1st. Um, and we had a long period before then, you may remember, where there was there was nobody in either the business manager or, or admin manager position. And so it really changed quickly. Um, and having somebody at, at, in the lead here has really helped us out a lot. I just would also just remind you that both of them are still relatively new, still learning a lot of things, so please be patient. But I feel kind of like we've got a mostly rebuilt staff and people in the office that, are, that work together and that work well. So Paula Scavell, who's, who does purchasing travel for us. Jacob Turner, of course, who many of our graduate students get to know very well. He's the director of our undergraduate laboratories in charge of the, the teaching assistants. And of course, the, the unflappable Tom Bush, who all of us, uh, certainly faculty, um, appreciate enormously for his encyclopedic knowledge of every single grant proposal rule that exists. And for his ability to say, oh, you don't have to worry about that. Here's a spreadsheet. Fill it out. I'll do the rest. Okay. So that's what Tom brings to us. And I will show you in a moment why it matters. Okay. Ah, oh, yes. So <laughs> Sasha, I'm sitting back there. Daria Winter. I just want to give a shout out to, to Daria and say thank you. Thank you. So we had a we had a position open because well we had all, I'm coming to that we had a position open for a lecture demonstration specialist and um, because of the budget crunch we're not allowed to fill it right now and Daria has been gracious enough to stick with us and provide you know some some modicum or some portion of of that job, she only works for part time. Uh, so handling some of the lecture demo, handling some of the heavy lifting in the department, moving things around. And I just want to say, I'm grateful. We've got you at least through next year if you want to stay. So, um, and and hopefully that position opens up. I don't know when that's going to happen, but you know, um, again, it's part and parcel of the of the budget issues. But we're grateful to have you, and we're grateful that. And you're able to, 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 to do these things that are really important for, for our classes. 
Okay, so yeah, why? Why? Because we lost somebody really important from the staff. We lost Tom Johnson to retirement. We didn't lose, lose him. He's still around, <laughs> you know, but he did retire. In 30 year career here, here's some of the picture highlights of him getting on the bed of nails and, and you know, doing the various magic of demo shows. He wasn't just the lecture demo guy, he was our IT specialist for the department. He ran all of our computer systems. He was an all around handyman. He could just fix just about anything. And what I called, what I always refer to as the resident web serologist, knowing that this building is just quirky, quirky. And he knew probably 90, 95% of those quirks. And that was really, really useful. Um, so he retired November 1st uh, last year. And you may remember he went out with a bang with, with the so-called last demo show. Um, which was, was here in the building and was really awesome. So just wanted to say thank you to Tom for 30 years of great service. And I hope, as I said, I hope that we get to, to replace uh, or to hire a replacement. Um, I put this up every year too, just to remind you that, you know, WSU isn't just Pullman. Uh, we have other campuses and we teach physics at other campuses, but we do research in other places too. We now have connections at PNNL, we have connections at LIGO, okay? Um, we have connections out in Seattle through uh, Marston and, and Forbes, okay? We've got Spokane, the Applied Sciences Laboratory, Eric Nylers is an affiliate faculty in our department and takes students. There are lots of research opportunities for you graduate students, not just in Pullman, and we will make the effort to help you negotiate having to do research away from Pullman, managing your classes and all of that, okay? So, oh, and Jim Bareliak, of course, I want to mention too, just because he's affiliate faculty in the department, but he actually serves our department, um, uh, um, you know, quite, you know, a lot in terms of serving on the graduate admissions committee and, and also taking students and, and contributing to the life of the department in other ways. Yes. Uh, I want to quash this real quick because I'm tired of calling him Jim. Uh, his last name is Harlack, and I can't call him Dr. Harlack because then no one knows what I'm talking about, and I don't want to keep calling him Jim. So just PSA is Harlack. Harlack. Yeah. Don't pronounce the W. Just skip all those vowels. Really? <laughs> I asked him for his How is it that he's been here? I've known him for so many years and he's never corrected me. <laughs> <laughs> so if I say Dr. Harlack, that's Jim. <laughs> By the way, I, my name really is Sam. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's not. It's not. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And I was going to prepare a couple more slides, but, but I'm worried about the time. I just want to point out that you know, I could put a similar map of the United States up there and a similar map of the world up there. You know, people like Brian Collins, who, who, who does so much work at, 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 at Berkeley, and, and people like Steve Tomzevic, who has these great collaborations in, in France and Germany, okay? And, and, you know, and of course, we have, you know, the, 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 the large facility in Argonne. What is it called again? Dynamic compression sector. Yeah, DCS, Dynamic Compression Sector at Argonne, um, which is a WSU facility that's in, you know, that's in the National Laboratory. We have presence. We have presence. We're, we're, we're this little school, this little department. We have presence in all of these places, and we matter, and it's great. Okay, so I didn't make slides for that. I just, and I probably left out any number of other collaborations and things, but, but please forgive me, just pointing out that that they exist and they exist throughout the park. I want to acknowledge, oops, hold on. I want to acknowledge our newest faculty members. So I introduced Brian last year, Brian Jensen, who was the new director of ISP. And again, he had been on the job for like three hours at that time, you know, he was just starting last fall. But I just want to point him out again. He's been tremendous to work with. I think that, that um, there really is going to be uh, 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 a new kind of robust connection between ISP and, and physics and astronomy. I'm really looking forward to it. He's done recruiting for us. He's brought in students. Um, and um, um, I'm, we're just really glad to have him here. 
And um, Maria Carisi, of course, I want to introduce. There's Maria. It's a little bit after. I sort of mentioned you last time, but I just said that you were on your way. Okay. So Maria, of course, is is uh, is an astronomer and and, uh, and does these these. Uh, studies of supermassive black hole binaries, gravity wave searches. You may have heard last summer about the big to do about the background, the background of gravitational radiation. So we do the big collisions now, we know about those, but we also know that there's this background like the CMB, it's a gravity. And, and um, that's right in the middle of Maria's experiment. And so that was awesome to see all that publicity come out and say, yeah, you know, that student was hired. So we're very grateful to have you here. Um, and finally, just recently, and I'll probably have to put his picture up again here next year because he's been on the job for like an hour. Um, Dan Dolan, well, I just want to introduce everybody sitting right there. Welcome. And what Brian is a former PhD student here at WSU and has returned to Pullman. Um, after 20 year career at Sandia National Lab, very, uh, very prestigious and very accomplished career, APS fellow whose expertise is in things like velocimetry, pyrometry, optical detection methods in dynamic compression physics. And I think again, this is, this is great that we have you not just at ISP, but we have you here in our department. And uh, again, talks a lot about how the two are are going to, to be and stay connected. So welcome, Dan, and thank you for, uh, thank you for being here. Okay, so those are our newest faculty members. Let me talk to you a little bit about, skip it. All right, hold on, there we go. Now, one of the things that impressed me when I first came to this department was I was really impressed, and believe it or not, not all departments are like this. I was really impressed with how our career track faculty are, are, are treated and acknowledged. They are equals with every other faculty member here. And not only that, but, but those of us who are in the tenure track recognize that without our career track faculty, there's no way we could get the research done that we get done. And you know, they have the same voting rights, they have the same everything. They are, they are full members of our faculty. And again, I say, unfortunately, I've been in a few departments where it's not quite like that, right? Um, and so it's really special to me to be able to point out that we had three promotions last year, all in the career track ranks. Michael Allen was promoted to full professor in the career track. Nicholas Rudy promoted also to full professor. And Anya Guy promoted from assistant to associate professor in the career track. So I guess I'm okay.
about four physics departments closing. Uh, SUNY Potsdam was one of them, Bradley. Uh, I, I can't quite remember the other ones. The problem is always that no matter what, what they do and how good they are, they have to have undergraduates. They have to have a major program. Okay. So I think we're always going to be somewhat small there, but we're steady. And that's good. Okay. And that's good. So, and I would I would also point out, so here are the the um the degrees. The enrollment in our first first year seminar class for the first year students who are interested in physics is big. It's 34. And I'm really excited about that. 34 potential physics majors. Okay. Now, you know, they probably won't all be, but I ask you, as again as a department, to, to do your best in welcoming uh, our, our newest students and encouraging them to, to continue on in the major. Are we going to do a social this year, Michael? Yeah, not next week, the week after. The week after. So every year, and we're going to do it again this year, week after next, there's a social, and everybody is invited to come meet our new potential physics majors, talk to them about what their interests are, what research they need to do. And uh, this is really a great thing we've been doing for the last five or six years um, that really gets our new students involved with, um, with uh, the major. Okay. So, now is one of my favorite times of this talk. So I do this every week too, because this is one of my favorite times. I'm going to ask, so all of you, I just want to say thank you too for everybody who sent me pictures like with 24 hours left before my talk. That was awesome. Um, and if you didn't, that's okay. I mean, really, I was I was way, way behind you. But could I please ask our entering first year graduate students to stand? I like this. And we are going to welcome you first year graduate. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to thank you. Thank you for taking this step, for taking this leap. This is, you know, we all know that, that people with your kind of training can go off and do things that make a lot more money. Um, and, and you've chosen, because you're passionate about doing research, you've chosen graduate school. And um, we could not do what we do here without strong students. And so I welcome you here. And I wish you the best, work well, or study hard, you know, uh, 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 work, what do I always say? Study well, work hard, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> welcome. And I just I just wanna say, this, this is the heart of our department here. And, and I point at, you know, all of our graduate students that I see out in the audience here too. Um, a special welcome to you all and a good luck and know that this is a friendly place that is collaborative and supportive. And we want you to succeed. We wouldn't have brought you here if we didn't think you could succeed. So good luck, and on we go. You can see, by the way, that they come from all over the country, all over the world. Students from uh, from India, from Nepal, uh, from Utah, from Colorado, University of Washington. You know, so this is good. I want to mention this. This is this is important because. It was, an important, it was important to rebound from having only four entered the year before. Um, and we had a little trouble because the college told us we did only have so many TAs. And for a while it looked pretty grim and we kind of had to fight to get enough TAs so that we could have a class. And I just want to express my gratitude also to Brian Jensen and to ISP in general, to Jim Harlap. And, 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 you know, by way of relationship also um, uh, to Dan, because they took on three students with RAs that allowed us to have a bigger class, a bigger incoming class. Now, one of those students has since decided not to come, but it's still, it's two students with RAs that we didn't have to support with TAs. And that really helped us in terms of the numbers. And so we're grateful for that. And this is something that I'm telling you, not a whole lot of departments have 11 new graduate students this year. So we fought for it, it's important, and it's one of the things that we need to do in order to keep the department vibrant. Oops. Okay, 
So I'm going to make the same announcement I made last year. There is still a graduate student recruitment task force um, with these faculty members here, Shinja, Brian, Sutan, and, and also uh, Eric was, I don't know if Eric is still going to be the graduate student person uh, represented on, on this committee, but if he is, that's great. Um, we've done some things like, like put in a premium page in the AIP's grad school shopper, which we need to curate better. I need to make sure that we, we do that. Um, and again, I'll just issue the same challenge to our faculty. If you are giving a talk, especially somewhere regionally, where you know the combination of maybe a four-year school where people need to learn more about graduate school and something that isn't going to break our bank, um, and you're going to give a talk there, I will contribute to your, to your travel expenses, especially if you are willing to spend part of the day with the undergraduate majors at that institution talking about graduate our graduate program, okay? So again, I issue that, that same kind of offer kind of challenge. Um, um, it, it's really important. I think we established that pattern last year. We need to keep it up so that, you know, we continue to attract the, the best students we can to our program. And I'll just tell Brian right now, I know we meet after this, right? Yeah, I'm still not ready. But, but we'll get there. All right. Um, just a brief thing with, with I, and this is one of those slides that I was in the middle of preparing and I kind of, I asked around a little bit. I know that, that Julia is still the president of the Undergraduate Physics Club and, and, and Professor uh, Sarudi is, is advising that. I think Messick is still president of Physicists for Inclusion in Science, Vivian is the, the faculty moderator. I encourage you um, to get involved with those things. Um, and finally, the Grad Club, Optica SPIE, it, it exists, but I think we don't have officers right now. So uh, just a, a quick shout out to the graduate students. If you're interested in something like that, they're, they're, the, those officers are open. They, 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 they do get money from, from, uh, from Optica uh, SPIE um, to host speakers and things like this. And it serves as kind of a general um, uh, uh, you know, club, social, and, and you know, uh, way of, of getting to know each other and bonding for, for our graduate student community, okay? So if you're interested in that, I encourage you to get involved. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, so this is an old slide because this isn't new this year. So this is Acacia, who um, who has kind of taken a lead role, maybe not the lead role, she might say, but a lead role in the Graduate Student Assembly, um, uh, which is an important body that represents graduate students in our department. Um, there was some other thing that happened early this year, uh, you know, organization of some kind. You know, the graduate students unionized. Okay, so I wasn't going to say too much about that, except that I think we all feel that it's important and good that our graduate students have gained, you know, have gained not just stipend, but gained, you know, representation, gained a voice, and the ability to, 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 you know, to fight for what's fair. I worry sometimes that it's a little adversarial. However, I think our department comes to the rescue there again. I think we built a great culture here. I feel like I had a great relationship with the graduate students and the graduate student leaders all through that difficult time. And I think that has served us well going forward and I hope that it continues to serve us well in this kind of new era. Okay. All right, oh yeah, I should have said, that we are continuing this year to add graduate students to our committees, to our faculty committees, so that they have representation there. And they already have, graduate students already have representation at our faculty meetings. That's something that we introduced last year and that, that will continue. Okay, last part. I know we're getting low on time here. So just a few, a few highlights. Now I said, I gotta give the disclaimer every year. I, what's up there is what people sent me. I know many more of you have done all sorts of great things, and I do appreciate that. And I don't, I'm not judging or faulting you for not sending me stuff, um, but it's what I got. I think it's pretty cool. 
And so I'll show you, just keep in mind that this is representative of what happens here. Now, the first thing I gotta say is I joked with, with Tom Bush last year when he said that grants, new grants awards were up to 2.56 million. He said, well, there's no way that's gonna increase next year. It's gonna dip. He's like, that's just kind of a blip. Yeah, well, 2.66 million this year in new awards. You wanna know why? We have so many RAs. It's because our faculty are bringing in large amounts of money to support our RAs. So when I say, and, and this doesn't include the 26 graduate students, I counted. 26 graduate students this fall supported on external grants, right? So some faculty have startup packages and things like that where they get an RA internally and so on, not counting those, okay? 26 on external grants, NSF, DOE, NASA, so on and so forth, okay? That's awesome. And it makes a huge problem for me every semester in that I've got to figure out where I'm gonna get TAs because you're all on RAs, okay? I love that problem. Bring it up, all right? I'll figure it out, okay? So this was really great. A couple of highlights I'll just mention um, um, that uh, uh, Shinji Guan, if I, Shinji, are you here? There he is. It's, he's, he's in his, starting your second year or third year? This is your third year. Yeah, third year. Third year, but in his second year, got his first single investigator in a SEF grant awarded, which is awesome. It's especially awesome if you know this, it's awesome for theory because theory is tough money to get. And so I really wanna say, you know, congratulations, well done. And I also want to say that it's just so gratifying for me to see the faculty that we've hired since I became chair excelling in the way that they are. Yes, I'm looking at you. Um, but really, all of you. And, and, and of course, we expect great things from, from all of our, our new faculty as, as, uh, as they progress in their, in their careers. But I just wanted to give a shout out to Chinja for for that, that's a big achievement. That's a big achievement, especially, um, especially for a theory grant. Okay. Um, right, so you see the list, it changes every year, but I feel like this department doesn't have dead weight. They're, your names you know, appear there periodically, right? And it's just a matter of, oh, you know, who's applying this year? Who got the new grant this year? And so that's the way I feel about it. I think it's awesome. This is uh, the trend line that, you know, I, 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 Tom told me would have to go down after this year, but it didn't. And so I'm really particularly proud of this. This is what's really transformed our, what we can do in, in the lab and, and with our TAs. And it's, it's kept us afloat as all this money has been, resources have been taken away. You've gone out and gotten those resources and used those resources and produced results that allow you to get more. That's what that shows over six, seven years. Okay, fantastic. I'm grateful. Um, <clears throat> the REU that we had for three years, thanks to Brian Collins applying for that grant, along with uh, now retired Gary Collins and and Anya Guy, who I don't know if Don was here, but but she's been kind of co-directing the the REU. They had a $346,000 grant. They hosted a total of 23 students over the first three summers. And this past summer represented the first year of the renewal, which came through at 485K. And there were 11 RU students and joined by nine WSU undergraduates. So it was a really solid cohort, 10 faculty mentors, 10 graduate mentors, thanks to all the mentors and everybody who contributed to making it a great experience for, for these undergraduates, okay? So this is another, so we've got three more years of this. This is a great showcase for our graduate program. These are some of the best students. Typically it's like four or 5% is the success rate of applicants for these programs. So they're good, okay? And they are people that we need to be showing and telling about our department and about our graduate program. So that's the sort of you know, additional benefit that comes from that. Oops. So a few things here, oh, I don't know why this, oh yeah, okay, great. 
So um, this is from uh, Michael Allen, who has continued to to uh, to use and and improve the use of um, of of robotic telescopes and and uh, you know things that can be done remotely um, to enhance our ability to to to, to have seniors do projects. So here you see. Um, oh, who was it again? Juliana. Juliana. Juliana, yeah. Um, from last year uh, in front of her project at the poster session. Um, the last two years, a couple of undergraduates have actually published their work. And uh, anybody who's interested in this uh, certainly uh, should talk to, uh, to Dr. Allen, to, to, to Michael about, uh, about this. This has been really a great thing for us because it's bringing astronomy, real astronomy to people. They get to take their own data. And then analyze their own data, and as as it notes here, sometimes even publish their own data. So, and um, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you know this, but one of our faculty members, Matt McCluskey, um, developed a specific kind of confocal microscope several years ago. There's at least two or three patents for it, um, and it, it turned into a successful company that is run by both Matt and and. Uh, and with Mike Bell, who's, who's uh, 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 an adjunct faculty member in our department. And, you know, it's been a going concern now for several years, um, but it's really taking off. And you're getting serious, you know, a lot of customers, serious customers. So this past year, Lockheed Martin and NIST joined the list of customers that have found that this particular uh, photoluminescence uh, uh, Raman uh, microscope is absolutely essential to the things that they're doing. So it shows you that there are many dimensions to our department, including the entrepreneurial one. And uh, and so this is a really nice development. And congratulations to, to Matt. Um, this came from uh, the Marston Lab, from uh, Dr. Marston. And, and these next couple of slides I just want to show because, especially because they show students. And I think they show students having cool, interesting, unique experiences in our department in various various places. I mean, to me, you just gotta walk across the street and go see the, you know, the, the thousand gallon tanks that, that um, where, where this acoustic, uh, optical, optical acoustic research gets done across the street. But it also takes place out west in Seattle on the ocean and uh, this is a slide of, 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 uh, uh, of apparatus being built and showing some of our students, Sterling Smith, Chris Powers, Heather Moon, on the boat at the end of the, the UW Applied Physics Laboratory dock. And I just also never can resist mentioning about the Applied Physics Laboratory that although it's, it's a UW laboratory, if you look at who runs it, it's all Phil's students. So that's... Uh, it's something that we should really be proud of, even though it's not something that you know necessarily waves the W S D flag outside. All right. So it's, there's the the W S D experiment deployed in the water by lowering this uh, large blue gantry. That, that so students are involved in that. What else? Well, here's an interesting one. So this was pointed out to me by by uh, by Yogi Gupta. Um, uh, few days ago, and, and Brian got this email too. Here's somebody, uh, Joachim Schur, I don't, I don't even think Phil remembers him being here. And that would be, you know, even before your time. But his master's degree was in 1971 from WSU right here. And uh, he's an APS fellow, and he's won things like the Davidson Germer Prize uh, for pioneering achievements in surface physics with x-rays, magnetic thin films, interfaces, nanostructures, the use of free electron lasers, in quantum optics. So this is one of your forebears, you graduate students. Okay. So and something again that I think we're proud of. And and this is he's he's retired now. He's at, he was at Stanford. And this is a an issue of the journal Structural Dynamics that's dedicated to his life's work. So and that is supposed to um, well the submission deadline is the end of this year. So this is something that's going to come up. Okay. Um, this came from uh, from Brian Collins, and it just shows. I like this because it shows kind of what happens to 
you know, what happens to students kind of currently and then as they graduate and then after they graduate. So these are all people from Brian's lab. And so um, uh, let's see, uh, Tom Farron it, it has, has already graduated, uh, graduated a few years ago, right? And, and um, uh, so, so he's, there's, this is the panel at the uh, Advanced Light Source User Meeting. And Tom does what there? Well, he's at Florida Prison right now. Yeah. yeah. He's got a, he's like, he's got so deep. He's, he's actually, probably going to be hired by Berkeley. Okay. Yeah, all right. All right. So going to be hired by Berkeley. And then you have, you know, then you have um, Devin Grabner, who's, who is a, a, a doctoral fellow, prestigious. I announced that, or I showed that in the talk last year, was uh, won a doctoral fellowship at the Advanced Light Source. And so he's here on this panel as well. And uh, so on this user meeting panel, and then also a current student, Harlan Heilman, who, who uh, won this Neville Smith poster award um, and also won, and I didn't mention it, but also won the, the same ALS doctoral fellowship. And the prize for winning, part of the prize for winning this, this poster award is that you give a plenary talk at the, at the user meeting, which is pretty cool. All right, so again, this is our students, our students doing stuff everywhere and accomplishing really cool things and doing very unique things, both currently as students and afterwards, after they get their training here in the UWC. Okay, that's it. I, I've run past and I'm sorry about that. Um, this is a slide I put up every year too. And it just reminds you that you know, I'm a values-driven leader. I expect to hold you accountable for our values. I expect you to hold me accountable for, for performing, for, 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 for acting from our values. My simple statement of our values is that students come first, always say hello to the custodian, which means nobody's above you, nobody's below you, all right? We all playing an important role on this team. Take the stairs, take care of yourselves, exercise, look after each other. I take seriously the idea of service leadership. I'm here to serve. I'm here to support you. I'm here to do things that will make it possible for you to succeed here. Feedback is always welcome. You cannot offend me. Tell me what's going wrong. Please tell me what's going wrong. I can't fix it unless you do, okay? Um, my email, there are appointments through Julia. I will try again this semester to establish the chair's office hour. That's for students only, graduate and undergraduate students in that hour. Come talk to me about whatever you want. And then we are going to continue graduate student town halls this year. Okay, so allowing graduate students to voice concerns and to and to tell us what's working and what's not. Um, so yeah, I just want to say again that it amazes me every year when I give this talk that I always start out with doom and gloom, and I always end up really pumped. And it's it's you all. Okay, it's it's what you do every day. It's, you know, it's, it's the research you're doing, it's, it's, it's the, the, you know, the teaching that you do, things I hear from our students. Um, this is a really great department, and I'm really, really proud to be its chair. So thank you for your attention. That's my charge for this year. Go do great work. And uh, yeah, thanks.